Hey craft friends, welcome to my channel. Let's get started. For our first project, we are gonna be needing these flowers that are normally for the garden. We're gonna take them apart and I just thought they were the coolest thing ever to use for a wreath. These ribbons, they're out right now all at the Dollar Tree for springtime. This wreath form that is year round at their store and then these metal words. And we're gonna be using the word welcome. So once you've got all of these items collected, you are ready to get started on our project. Now don't forget, if you are playing along with the challenge today for the DIY Spring Challenge, I have a video, I'm gonna link it down below, we how to link to the playlist if you're having a hard time doing it. I showed you all how to do that in that video. Go ahead and start by removing all of the flowers and the leaves from the wire stems. And don't throw away the wires because we're gonna be using those wires in another video on another day. I love these wires, they're so strong and thick and you can turn them into so many cool things. I like to upcycle or recycle things like that all the time here on my channel. So keep those wires, just tuck them aside somewhere in your craft room so no one can get hurt by them because they're pokey. They all come off pretty easy, it just takes a little bit of a twisting motion and then the head of the flowers just wiggle that wire back and forth until it breaks. Once you've got them all popped off, you're ready to go ahead and start assembling them. You're gonna just take some simple wire that you can pick up from any craft store, and then you're going to twist that on to the back side of the flower, and to really make sure that it's nice and secure, I like to take it, loop it around one of the flower petals, and then I'm gonna go to one of the supporting ring bands you can see the ones that go across those are like those, those supporters for all the rings to hold them together i'm going to wrap it right at those joints because that's going to be the greatest place to keep it on there nice and strong and firm without them shifting and moving over time once you've got that wired on the first one you're then going to start your pattern i went back and forth between yellow pink yellow pink and you can see here that i'm planning on using these leaves to fill in in the middle but you're gonna go ahead and just make sure you have the right one that you're gonna be using next. Flip it back over and repeat that same process where you're gonna take that wire, twist it around, loop it around one of the flower petals, and then after a little bit of time, you're gonna have all of your flowers on and it is going to be so beautiful and colorful and cute at this point. Now remember, you're working with wire, so just try not to poke your finger because sometimes you can't be poked, so just take your time. And here's what it looks like when you flip it over and all the flowers are assembled on. If you haven't already, please click that thumbs up button. It really helps out my channel. And click the subscribe button if you are new. I post here on my channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday if you're new coming over from that playlist today from the DIY challenge. My name is Heidi from Happily Thriving Heidi. And on Fridays, I do this special thing called Friend Friday where I introduce you to new crafters here on YouTube. It can be hard to be seen and I love to introduce new people. And on this last Friday, I ended up doing a free printable. So make sure you go grab that free printable. All right, let's get back to our project. I am going to now move on to the leaves and I wanna introduce you all to a brand new tool. It's actually been out for the longest time. It's really popular among scrapbookers. So if you're a scrapbooker, you might already know what this tool is. It's called a crop a dial. I'm gonna link it down below. This is one of my favorite tools in the crafting world. It is so good that my husband loves this thing and asks for it all the time when he's working on things around the house. It can punch through metal. It is the coolest thing. It's meant for brads and for eyelets, which is really awesome, but I love this thing so much. So you're gonna see here that I'm gonna just punch holes through these hard metal leaves and it goes through like butter. It's no problem at all using this thing. Again, I will link it down below and you can pick them up all over the place if you haven't seen them before. Trust me, this is something to add to your craft collection of tools. I love this thing like crazy. So once you've got everything punched out, and by the way, you don't have to buy this tool. If you have a drill at home, you can also use that, or you can always skip the leaves and put some ribbon in between these big flowers. That's another alternative option. Once you've got your leaves all punched out with that, you're then gonna go and take some wire, cut some small pieces, and you're going to just thread that wire through those double holes that we just punched. And then you're gonna flip over your wreath. And at this point, we're not gonna have those joining rink lines that we had earlier to attach our flowers. 
it's going to be a little more wiggly so we're going to use some hot glue to help hold things in place so you're going to go ahead and wrap it around two of those rings to make sure it's on there really nice and you're going to twist 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 until you feel like it's nice and secure and then you're going to tuck that wire down and under i really recommend tucking the wire down and under so later on down the line you don't poke yourself on accident when you're working around this thing and decorating your home and then once you've got it on you're going to flip it over and bend that little leaf up just a little bit just to make sure that it has life to it and then you're going to add some hot glue to hold it in place and it will stay in place and the hot glue also is a great way to help tuck that wire in and keep those pokey edges from poking you once you've got that first leaf in place you're ready to move on to the rest of them and this is just such a simple process you're going to just decide where you want your leaves to be put on some wire twist it on and hot glue it and you're going to see that you're going to have some bigger gaps and holes and when you do i recommend adding a few more leaves in there or like i said if you've decided that you don't want to do the leaves you can always end up adding in some more green ribbon in this point and just really fill in these cute flowers this is such a fun project if you are a color lover so once you've got all of your leaves on, you're then ready to move on to the next part, which is just gonna be so cool and it's gonna really finish the look, which is the bow. Now, if you don't know, I had a video come out last week where I showed my tips and tricks on how I make my beautiful bows and I will show you how I make this particular bow, but I'm gonna just tie it on to that big empty space that you have at the bottom because I ended up using five of those metal flowers you could end up putting a sixth one on there, another yellow, but I really wanted to add a dramatic bow. I made sure I saved two of those green metal leaves because I wanted to tuck them into the center point of the bow. And I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna add that wire and I'm gonna tuck it underneath that middle ribbon. And I'm just gonna wire it around to the back and make sure it's all nice and snug in place and then hot glue where I need to hot glue. And then the trick is to make it look really finished and polished, I tucked it underneath the ribbon, pulled the ribbon over enough to be able to hide those holes, and then just hot glued it. I thought this looked so cute. And then we're gonna zhuzh that ribbon a little bit. I love that word, by the way, zhuzh. <laughs> We're going to just zhuzh our ribbon a little bit and then work on the last finishing touch, which is the welcome sign. You're going to go ahead and take your metal word and at the very end points, you're going to wrap that wire around, take one of those wire sides, sneak it down onto that ribbon, twist it and hide it down on the back side of that ribbon loop so nobody sees it. It is such a finished, polished look. And it is such a cute look to hang up on your front door. And that pretty much is gonna finish this very first project. What do you all think? Now today is a giveaway day and I've been so excited about this. I have some goodies. I collected these items that have been my favorite so far. Yes, even the sphere that you have all been looking for. And Arteza partnered up with me for this giveaway. They are giving away this X-Acto knife kit which I have been using in a bunch of my videos. Now if you don't know who Arteza is, they sell some of the greatest products for crafters. I love how thick their paints are for their acrylic paints and these wood slices. I have a video coming up real soon with these wood slices where you are going to just love this project. It is so fun and super rustic if you love that rustic farmhouse look. But they've got a lot of really great art supplies. So Arteza, thanks so much for sending us this X-Acto knife kit. Leave a comment down below and I will be picking one winner and announcing them next week. All right, let's move on to our next project. This next one, you are all going to laugh because it is the most random thing that I'm using, but it's going to come together as a really darling, whimsical home decor item to display on a table. You're going to go ahead and start with this cap that you would put on a jar, and you're going to take some E6000 and some hot glue 
to make sure that it's really glued on there well. I like to go in with both of these adhesives because it allows it to be able to set long term and short term so it really does not pop off and have any problems over time. You're going to see me do that a lot in this video for this particular craft. So we're going to do it again. We're going to take the lid off of that candle and we're going to put it on top of that metal cap and then we're going to just put it off to the side to let it dry. And then we're going to take a shower curtain ring and a pot and we're going to do that again. Remember what I said? Total, total random items that we're using on this project. But it's just so cool how you can take these random things and turn them into something. So you're going to do that again. The hot glue in the E6000 and you're going to adhere those two together and then you're going to take this floral fish bowl and put that right on top. So once you've got everything all glued into place, go back in with some hot glue just to reinforce and you're good to go. If you don't know, next Wednesday is my spring home decor challenge. I would love you all to join. I'm going to link that information down below if you like home decor videos. Okay. And then we're going to take some of that Arteza paint. We're going to go with some white and some yellow. I'm going to lighten it up just a little bit because I felt like this yellow was just a little too bright with what I was going for today. So I lightened it just a little bit. And I did start by making the first coat of paint white so that it absorbed into the terracotta. And then the can lid and the um, glass topper to the candle, I spray painted those white. So once those were dry, I could go in with the yellow and make sure that color was really popping and pretty and bright. Now we're going to take that bunny that we saw earlier from that kid's art kit and we're going to pop out that little metal ring hook at the top. Take your time to take it out because it can crack the bunny. And then you're going to take a little paintbrush. And again, Arteza has these really great fine tip paint brushes. A few of you have asked about which ones I use. I'll link them down below. You're going to go ahead and just paint on his tiny little eyes. And then I took some of the pink paint and I painted on his little ears. And then I'm going to use that dry brush technique that you've seen me use in other videos where I'm going to take just the tiniest bit of white paint and dry brush on some white paint to distress the yellow just a little bit because I love that look of distressing things. It makes it look more weathered and just, I don't know, farmhouse, my favorite, right? <laughs> like you all know. And then to clean up the connection between the terracotta pot and the glass lid, because we don't really want to see that shower curtain ring. That's just kind of a weird thing to have on there. I'm going to take some hot glue and some satin ribbon that they had at the Dollar Tree, and I'm just going to wrap it around there nicely to clean up that look. Now, everything you're seeing here is coming from the Dollar Tree Arteza for those art supplies. And then um, ribbon that I just randomly had on hand. This is another ribbon that I actually used in that ribbon bow video that I did last week. And I'm just going to be putting it here on this project. So I'm going to glue that bow on at an angle like you saw. I only glued on half of the bow and let the other one hang off to the side. I thought that was really cute. And then I'm going to take some of this moss, glue that down inside, take that bunny once he's all dry with some E6000 and hot glue once again, just kind of nestle him in there. And then to hide some of that glue because you're going to see it kind of on the glass, you don't want to see that. I'm going to lift the bunny a little and tuck that grass down in there. And then I'm going to add some of these eggs that I did from a previous video where I showed how I painted them. I'll link that video down below as well where I have that robin egg look. And I'm going to just tuck those down in there so that you all can see that they just look like this cute little foresty scene. And then with some more E6000 and hot glue, I'm going to put on the cap and finish that look by wrapping around a rope. I thought that that would look really nice up at the top. And then who doesn't love a button on a bow? <laughs> I picked up some buttons from the Dollar Tree and added it on. Leave a comment down below to let me know what you think about these colorful spring projects that I did today. I love my neutrals, but I also really love color. So let me know what you think. Don't forget, go and visit the playlist that's also linked down below with all the other people playing along here on YouTube that have channels. You'll get to see a lot of new people and check out all of their channels. And until the next episode, bye friends.